a blessed day to everyone. Greetings from the Philippines. So I'm so happy and blessed uh, for the privilege that God has given me to share the true gospel tonight, or this very hour. And my topic is about the true priest. So before I share my topic, let's pray first. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, who is the Christ, Lord, thank you for using me as your vessel of honor tonight. Lord, please use me as your mouthpiece of God. Lord, please anoint my lips. Let life comes out from it, that comes from you, oh God. Lord, thank you for choosing me, Lord, as one of the disciples all over the world. Lord, please speak unto each disciple tonight, oh God. Please reveal unto us the true gospel that you wanted to know, Lord, so that uh, we will grow, oh God, in serving you, Lord. Because, Lord, the, the deeper we know you, the higher you reign in our lives. Thank you for being with us tonight, Lord. Please speak unto us, oh God. Thank you so much, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Okay. So, um, the Pentateuch, or the five books of the Bible, uh, the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, records the ministry of the priests during the Old Testament times. But before the existence of priestly ministry, yeah, just a minute, Adam, yeah, Pastor Mareva. Yeah, just a minute. Yeah, please, uh, can you remove your hairpiece so that you speak directly to your phone? There is a kind of a sound coming from your side, which might distort people from listening to the message. Oh, okay. So if you just remove your hairpiece from the phone and speak directly to the phone. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, you can continue. So the Pentateuch, or the five books of the Bible, from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, records the ministry of the priests during the Old Testament times. But before the existence of priestly ministry, Adam, Cain, Abel, Noah, and Abraham already did the sacrificial offerings. They already practiced this. Um, the family heads acted as priests for their families, as God commanded to Moses in Exodus chapter 12, verse 3. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to, uh, is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. Until the time came when God ordained priests. So Aaron and his sons were chosen as priests for the nation. We can see it in Exodus chapter 29, verse 9. And uh, fasten caps on them, then tie sashes on Aaron and his sons. The priesthood is theirs by a lasting ordinance, then you shall ordain Aaron and his sons. So this time, uh, Aaron and his sons were chosen as priests for the nation. So what are the rules of the priest in the Old Testament? So first, the, the priests are in charge of offering sacrifice or offering sacrifices. So they offer sacrifices to God to atone for the sins of the people. But he himself also needs to offer sacrifices or sacrifice for his own sin because the priest must be worthy before the Lord in order for his offering to be accepted. They also, or the priest also, acted as mediators between God and people, or between God and God's people. So they offer sacrifices in behalf of the people's transgression. 
and they also act as a representative of the people to God. And so what are the priestly duties? So first, um, managing God's holy place or altar and taking charge of sacrifice, sacrifices. So we can see, see it in Numbers chapter 16, verse 40. So the burning of incense, the sprinkling of the blood of animals being offered by the priest, that was one of his duty, and the execution of the burnt offerings. They were also the ones who is authorized to burn incense to the altar. And second, uh, one of the priestly duties is to oversee or overseeing daily sacrificial offerings. So we can see it in Numbers chapter 28, verses 3 to 8. So the priest supervises the daily sacrificial offerings of God's people. And in number three, uh, they're the ones who teach the law of God to the people. We can see it in Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 3, and Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 26. So the priests here uh, serve as counselors and instructors of God's law to his people. And next, the priests uh, were the ones to seek God's will. So we can see it in Exodus chapter 28, verse 30. So Aaron beer, the means of making decisions for the people by seeking God's will. And fifth, regulating or one of the duty of the priest is to regulate the disease of the people. So they were the ones in charge of the sick people who needs to be cleansed. And sixth, uh, one also of the priestly duty is to take upon the role of the judge, uh, which can be seen in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 8 to 9, and Second Chronicles chapter 19, verses 8 to 11. So the priest here, uh, will settle disputes and give verdicts on it. And seventh, uh, the priest test whether a wife was unfaithful or not. So we can see it in Numbers chapter 5, verses 11 to 31. So in here, a uh, priest served as marriage counselor to God's people. And uh, eight, uh, one of the priestly duties is uh, to give uh, offerings for the cleanliness of the Nazarites. We can see it in Numbers chapter 6, verses 1 to 21. So the Nazarites were people who wholly dedicated or devoted their lives to God. But the priests were above them. So the priest will be the one to execute uh, for the offerings for the cleanliness of the Nazarite, Nazarites. Ninth, so one also of the duties of the priest is to take part in the offerings made for special vows, which can uh, we can see it in Leviticus chapter 27 verses 8 to 25. So the priest will be the one to assess the value of the offerings made for special vows. And then, uh, the priest, they're the ones to do the horns and give blessings in the name of God. So we can see it on Numbers chapter 6, verses 27 to, or sorry, 22 to 27. So the priest 
were the ones to declare blessings to God's people. And in Malachi chapter 2, verse 7, For the lips of the priests ought to preserve knowledge, because he is the messenger of the Lord, of the Lord Almighty, and people seek instruction for Sorry, Missionary Nina. Sorry, please, can you check your volume again? Your voice is very low. Please, Thank volume you. up. Volume up. Let me wear my earpiece. Okay, that okay. is much better now. I okay. can hear you now. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, and regardless of all this issue, I truly hope that we'll be able to focus on what God has to tell us today. So although priests, they played many different duties, but one of the greatest roles that they had to play was the worship, uh, giving sacrificial offering on behalf of people. And Israelites, because of their sin, they understood that if they go to God, they will be killed. So these priests, they had to give sacrificial offerings so that the sins of the people can be forgiven, can be cleansed so that they can be with God and God can dwell um, among them. So that was the greatest role that the priest had to play and it was a very important role. The sinners, they needed the priest and the sacrificial offerings. But if you look back at the priest, they were also not perfect. Let us open Hebrews chapter 7, 27 and 28. Hebrews chapter 7, 27 and 28, it says, Unlike the other high priests, he did not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. So before giving sacrificial offerings for others, he had to sacrifice the animal for his own sin first because he was also human with his own sins. So he sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. So um, it's, it's referring to the Christ. Um, and then let us look at Hebrew chap Hebrews chapter 10, 11. It says, day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. So although they would give sacrificial offerings, but it was temporary, um, so that they had to give another offering the next day, next year, because people continued to sin, and the offerings they have they gave could not finish the sin perfectly and eternally. It was a, just a temporary measure. So they had to perform their religious duties again and again. So imagine um, killing how many animals that they have uh, they have to have to solve their own sin. And that was going on because the priests were also not perfect, and the sacrificial offering they were giving were not perfect. It was just temporary. And let us open Leviticus chapter 4, verse 3. Leviticus chapter 4, verse 3, it says, If the anointed priest sins, it shows that even the anointed priest would sin, bring guilt on the people. He must bring to the Lord a young bull without defect as a sin offering for the sin he has committed. So he, since he has this great 
I would say, privilege to go near God and give sacrificial offering on, on behalf of people, he also held great responsibility. So if he sins, the guilt will be on people. So he will have more negative impact or influence on people. So he, he had to give a young bull as an, as an sacrificial offering for the sin he has committed. And Jeremiah chapter 5, 31, the prophets prophesy, prophesy lies, prophecy lies, the priest ruled by their own authority. And my people love it this way. But what will you do in the end? So it shows that they even lie. Not only their sacrificial offering was limited and temporary, but also some of them were corrupted and they lie. They failed to lead people to the right path. And they even try to rule people by their own authority, not with the authority of God. And the surprising thing is people love it that way. And I believe this is very shocking, but it's still happening. Instead of leading people to God, if we are blind, then like when the blind man leads other blind people, it's, they are going to end up in destruction. So when we try to lead people, when we are blinded, then we will lead them to destruction. And, um, and it, it's not only going to be the destruction for myself, but it's also going to be the destruction for the people who follow me. And the thing is, many people love it that way. Many false prophets or ministers who would talk about their own things, people love it that way. In the church, when we bring up different topics, when we talk about philosophies and psychologists and counselings, when we take this knowledge of the world and bring it in the church, people actually love it. And when people love to receive these type of messages, pastors and ministers are tempted to share it because people love it. So we have this vicious cycle that is going to lead all of us to the destruction. And that took place in the old, old times, in the time of Old Testament. So through these verses, we can see that the priests, they were not perfect. Although these priests, they played a great role. And they were the great leader among the Israelites. And people, they truly needed the priest because the priest, they would play the role so that the sins of the people would be forgiven. So the, this great strong message was given to, um, to us through the book of uh, the Pentateuch because uh, five books of Moses, they mainly talks about the priest and sacrificial offerings that they have given to God. And one of the greatest messages is this, we need the true priest because the human priests are not perfect. They cannot do. And these priests from the very beginning, they were the very shadow of the Christ who was to come. And who is the true priest? Let us open Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 and 6 it was um it was prophesied how god is going to send thus the messiah and how he is the true priest verse 5 he says but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed we all like sheep has gone astray each of us has turned to our own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all so we are supposed to be um, crushed. We're supposed to be pierced. We were supposed to receive the punishment. We're supposed to pay for our wages of our sin. But it's promised through prophet Isaiah that the Messiah will be sent and he is going to carry our own iniquities. He will be crushed for us. He'll be punished for us. He'll be pierced for our transgressions and sins. That was promised. So he's going to be the very sacrifice or uh, the sacrifice that should be used for the sacrificial offering. And if we look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12, the author of Hebrews is describing this way. But when this priest had offered for all times one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And let us look at verse 14. It says, for by one sacrifice, he had made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Amen. So the, the author of Hebrews is comparing the priest and the sacrificial offerings they have given to God in the Old Testament. And this priest, 
this true priest and the sacrifice he has given to God. And he, he is saying that this true priest, he gave one sacrifice. And through this one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. So once and for all, he has, he has gained eternal redemption by giving one sacrifice. And that sacrifice was himself. And although all these pre human priests failed to finish our sin problem perfectly, this true priest, he came as promised and he fulfilled the promised work of the priest by giving himself as a living sacrifice and by playing the role or the office of the high priest, he completed gained the, uh, he completed the sin problem. He cleansed our sin and he gained the eternal redemption once and for all. Then some people might ask, well, all the priests, they were the descendants of Aaron. It was, it was already decided in the Old Testament as a law. So you cannot just take anyone and say, oh, he's a priest because Jesus, he was not the descendant of Aaron. Um, if you look at Genesis chapter 14, 18, we can see this character named Melchizedek. The, it says the Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high. And the author of Hebrews described him this way, without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the son of God, he remains a priest forever. And if you look at the verse two, it says, um, Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name Melchizedek means, so name Melchizedek means the king of righteousness, king of Salem, which means king of peace. So, and if you look at Hebrews chapter 6, 20, Hebrews chapter 6, 20, this author of Hebrews is saying that Jesus, he become, he became a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So although he is not the descendant of Aaron, he is still high priest. He is high priest in the order of Melchizedek. And it was actually prophesied in Psalm chapter 110, verse 4. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. You are not the priest who is going to die. You are not the priest who is going to give a temporary offering. You are not the priest who is, fail, who is going to fail to give me eternal offering. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. It was prophesied in the Psalms and it was fulfilled. And we can see it through the scriptures in Hebrews. And we know who is this priest? Who is this true priest? We know that Jesus, he is the true priest. Let us open Hebrews chapter 9, 12. Jesus, he is the true priest. And Hebrews chapter 9, 12, it says, he did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, thus attaining eternal redemption. Amen. Instead of sacrificing the animals, he sacrificed himself. He shed his own blood. He gave himself as sacrificial offering to God. And by doing that, he was able to gain eternal redemption for all of us. He is a true priest. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. It says, the son of man, he did not come to be served, but to serve and to keep, give his life as a ransom for many. So why does he need to pay a ransom? Why did the son of man have to come to the earth? Because he came to die. Why? We can imagine it this way. We're just like the slaves who are, who are in the market. You know, this slave master is having authority over us and we cannot escape from him. Or we are like the captives of the world. We have no power to free us from this master who is evil. Then someone needs to come and pay the ransom price for us. Someone needs to come and pay the fee so that we will be freed. And Jesus came and he paid the price. But with what? With his own life, with his own blood, he had to pay the ransom price so that we can be freed. So he came so that he can give his life as a ransom for us. That is what Mark chapter 10, 45 is telling us. He's not, he did not come to be served. He, but he came to serve us. He came to give life to us. 
And let us open Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 2. Romans chapter 8. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Amen. There is no condemnation if we are in Christ Jesus, because he already paid for our sin. It's not that we all of a sudden become sinless. We are we're sinners. We were sinners before. We are sinners now, and we continue to sin. And we are not worthy to be called righteous. But Jesus, he came and he paid his own life as a price. He is saying to, to the world, he's saying to Satan, he's saying that, saying, God, I'm paying for their sins. So when God look at us, he's not going to look at our sins our, or in our iniquities because we're covered by the blood of Jesus. So now there will be no condemnation. And, and the law of the spirit who gives life has set us free from the law of sin and death. Therefore, Jesus who have done this for us, he is a true priest. We need this true priest. We need the Christ. We need this high priest in our life. We, so right now we are talking about why Jesus is the Christ. So Pastor Ravi explained the meaning of the Christ. He's the anointed one. He's king, priest, and prophet. Yes, that's good. But you may ask, okay, it is good that Christ means the anointed one. It means the king, priest, and prophet. So what? So why do our, we are not going to get a test in theology. Why do we need to know that the meaning of the anointed one, the Christ, is the king, priest, and prophet? It's not a knowledge. We need to know what he has done for us. As a true king, he totally broke the power of Satan. He gained perfect victory over our enemy, Satan. And he's going to reign over us with righteousness, with justice forever. That is a promise. And he is a true king. And there is no king like him. And he is a true priest. He is the only one who can give us eternal redemption. He is the only one who can call us righteous because he's the only one who can pay for our sin and iniquities. All other religions will say, you be a better person. Remove all your greed. Work harder. Meditate. Prove yourself. The world will tell you. But the gospel proclaims that only thing you need to do is acknowledge what Jesus has done as the Christ and believe in it and accept it. This is amazing. That's why it's such a great news. It's a good news that he is our high priest. Amen. So only thing we need to do now is not trying so hard to remove our sin because we cannot do it, but believing that our sin has been already finished, that he has already called us as righteous because he has already given himself as the sacrificial offering and God was pleased with it. God Amen. received that offering. Amen. Amen. Amen.